all of our stories on our Changemaker show are incredibly inspiring and this is absolutely no doubt similar for our next guest uh, where this company has built one of the biggest biogas plants in Africa helping turn the waste product from our factories uh, in the likes of avocado and leading into potentially dairy waste into what will be a biogas and fertiliser. They're leading the way in the avocado industry with their approach to regeneration, sustainability and utilising all that waste to turn into energy. Their team there works hard to leave the communities and environment in a better state than when they started in Kenya. Olivado is carbon neutral now and has made a commitment to be carbon positive by 2022. They have also got a focus in uh, the north in Gary Hannum, Olivado's chief executive, joins us now here on Serious Country. Um, Gary, a beautiful backdrop there. I believe you're in uh, north of Omaru in uh, Riverside Kitchen. What takes you on the road today? Oh, we've been down visiting uh, friends down in uh, Wanaka, and we're about to go up and visit a dairy farm just north of here. Fantastic. We will get into how your the technology you've utilised in the avocado industry is going to work with dairy waste. But uh, could you give us a bit of a background into your personal journey uh, into getting to a point of having the biggest biogas plants in Africa? We started into Kenya in 2007 and we had a temporary factory there. And when we went to build our permanent factory, I really wanted a way to use the waste because we take, say, 15% of the oil out of an avocado and the rest of it is waste, which isn't a very good commercial outcome, really. So I wanted to look at other ways of doing this. And my son, who was with me in Africa at the time, suggested, Dad, why don't we think of biogas? And was it connected to the communities in Africa and finding a way for them to progress uh, and to have a source of energy that was sustainable as well? Well, it was actually for us, for the factory, because out in Africa, in, in, in the backwoods of Africa, you know, power supply isn't regular. So we wanted to find a way other than having diesel generators. And what is the process involved in turning uh, waste into biogas and obviously what capturing the methane um, to turn it into electricity? Well, we were starting from scratch because there was no research in the world that showed how you could turn avocado waste into methane or even if it would make good methane. So we had a two-year research project, which we did in-house in Kenya, and came up and decided, well, yes, it does make good methane. And so then it was, what sort of plant would we build? And so we had to design that as well. So it really was, you know, our green fields uh, start from scratch. What's your investment here in New Zealand's avocado industry, Gary, and taking that technology forward? Well, it's um, about a year ago, we realised we we should really build a new factory in Kerikiri. And because the number of avocados being grown in the far north is much higher now, in fact, we'll double our production in the next five years because of these new plantings. Having a biogas plant here for the avocado waste is a very good idea as well. So I come from a dairy farm, dairy farming background. And so I thought, well, why don't we look at that for the dairy industry? So now we're combining with the first plant for avocado and we'll have two plants uh, to trial on dairy farms to use the, the dairy waste off feedlots. And there's a uh, NAFA Innovation and Enterprise Park um, that you've recently announced uh, the further innovation to, to do so. What's the government's support and involvement in, in such a project? Well, the, the uh, Far North Holdings, which is a commercial arm of the District Council, um, is the, the mover and shaker behind this innovation park. And uh, we're one of the cornerstone companies moving into it. So um, the government's involvement is that uh, the uh, regional, what was it, the Regional Development Fund that was set up 
a little while ago is funding the infrastructure there. It's absolutely fantastic. What what does um, the future look like for this type of technology? Do you believe for both for both uh, our horticulture and dairy waste in this country? Well, I, I think it's it, it's an essential part of going forward. You know, there, there's a in the past, you know, the dairy industry has been a major contributor to New Zealand's economy. And it's not that one should sit back and say, well, you know, we have to scale back the dairy industry because innovations like this mean that we can become world leaders in terms of creating a circular economy for the dairy industry and moving forward and having a competitive advantage overseas for our products. And this is what we've done in avocado. And this is what we know we can do for the dairy industry. Gary, thank you so much. And it's just an incredible that we've uh, speaking to you on this particular show when we've just heard from um, Fraser, uh, a, a part of the Dairy, uh, Dairy NZ Climate Change Ambassador in terms of reducing methanes and in the dairy industry. And yet we have a technology here where we can work on utilising it and turning it into to biogas. So, oh, goodness i i'm super inspired and i'm sure our viewers and listeners uh will be as well around this massive sustainability project that has been trialed in africa and now is heading uh, to northland and to kiri kiri and and uh gary thank you very much for taking the time to join us on serious country 